What's going on, everybody? It's your boy Cesar with Cesar Gets Crypto, and we are talking about Bitcoin Cash today. Shout out to the Dragon Riders in the House of the Dragon. We are moving down a little bit today. Down, you know, we're down one percent, um, but whatever. You know, nothing, nothing has been convincing one way or another yet. There are some, I would say, mixed signals amidst this whole price range. This is the most, and if you guys have been following the channel, you know, since here, since whenever, I haven't really pay too much mind to any of these highs, any of these lower highs at all. This is the only one that's actually had me and probably some of us, you know, not just me myself, but I bet it's got most of us on the edge of our seat kind of checking in on this thing more than we regularly do because even though the days have been, you know, like yesterday was 0.65%, the day before was 3.52, you know, the day, like all these have been less than 5% moves, even the days um, bringing us up here. I guess this day was 7%, um, but all these days here are, are so small, even though they're small, it's an area that's kind of critical one way or another, whether you're bullish or bearish, whether you think it's going to do this or you think it's going to do that or like whatever it does, um, that is a K. Um, it's not going to do a K. But whatever it does, we don't have confirmation either way. And with that, you know, I, I'm at one point I was saying 50-50. We have a 50-50 chance of going up and a 50-50 chance of going down. I changed that either earlier today or yesterday, I can't remember, to a 60-40% chance that we go to the downside, 40% chance that we go to the upside, 60-40. Um, and I just think, you know, the more red days we get, especially if we can close below this day here, we still have lower highs. If we can get another lower low to come in, that would add on to the pressure on the bulls and kind of relieve some of the pressure that the bears are experiencing right now. There's a whole lot of bullish things going on right now, right? We're doing things differently than we have throughout this whole price range. Not once out of any of these highs have we lingered like we have here. When we find our high, we turn around, we turn around, you know, go through and look at all of them. We've turned around. Um, to be completely fair, from top to bottom, we're not really in the middle of anywhere with, with our FIB, right? We're kind of disrespecting this 382. We didn't top off anywhere. To be fair, we didn't top off here either. If we go back to this FIB, we did top off right at the 618 here, right at the 382 here in the middle of nowhere, okay? But that's what, you know, it's it's not common in my opinion, to not to like just disrespect this 382 like this. I don't I don't know what to make out of it on a on a fib basis. So that's where we use other things. You know, talking about the bullish side of things, um, we did break out of this trend line, this de uh, descending trend line that we've been in since June. Broken out of it and truly broke out of it because we closed above it. We have maintained prices above it. We even had a back test on it and bounced up. But the thing is, that's contrary to this bullish endeavor. Unless today closes green, right? and continues to move further. But but it's been two days, right? It's been two days since we back-tested this very sh significant line. We It's been two days since we back-tested it, and this is all we've got is another lower high. Like, literally, it's kind of like a double top, but very technically, if you zoom in, it is a lower high. We haven't produced much. We've actually, that on that day, we even produced a day that has a bigger wick. It's basically the same size wick as the body, but we measured it. It is technically a little bit bigger. Um, and we haven't gotten continuation. That's the main thing, you know. So even though this is a bullish look, I would say like across many charts, most charts, this is an ideal bullish setup. It really is. Like take this picture and freeze it in your mind, save it, put it in your back pocket, save it for later, because this is a very bullish scenario right here. But where's the follow through? Where is it? Where's the volume? You know, volume itself is kind of lackluster right now. Yes, we got a little bit of an increase compared to here, but all in all, like it's still declining. I would say. I don't know, hard to say, but if you look at the four hour declining, it's more obvious on the four hour. If you go to BCH USDT on Binance where I think the volume is more significant, you can see it's declining. Um, on top of that, you know, we have lower highs in the RSI. The RSI itself right now, to be completely fair, is neutral. I would say it's neutral, but after having such a strong run up, I would think that it would take more of a break, especially showing this neutrality now and not continuing to build into the overbought zone. Um, we're barely, you know, getting into the over or into the bullish area of control and we're kind of rejecting that. So I would expect that we go down to the oversold zone. That's my expectation at the moment, um, and it has been, but but it's definitely it's definitely not easy waters to navigate right here, guys. We're doing things differently. We've lingered up here. We haven't lingered at any of these. You know, you can go back and check it yourself. We have broken above this trend line. None of these none of these have done that so far. Um, what else is bullish for it? I don't know. Let's see. From from top to bottom here, this most kind of relative fib that we have, we actually broke 
above the 618. We broke above it, you know? First test here we didn't, and then the second test we did. We came back and we even found support on it. We literally back, we didn't just back test this trend line, but we back tested the 618 and found support and then had a bullish engulfing candle afterwards. But where's the follow through? Like there's there's all this all this bullish stuff going on and, and all we got afterwards was a 0.64% day. Like today better be green, otherwise the, the strength or the ball is gonna go right back to the bear's court where this idea of hidden bearish divergence where you have a high here and a higher high, but a high here and a lower high comes back into effect and that would maintain the idea or entertain the idea that we are still in a downtrend. Generally, you see bearish divergence play out and work well in downtrends and it marks continuation. And what would continuation be from a lower high? It would be a lower low, right? Lower than this low here. And ultimately, guys, you know that since we moved down here, you know, throughout this range, I've been saying we'd go to 185 to 135. Okay, we hit that here with this, right? We went to like 165. That's within the range. Um, it was a big range, so it was an easy target to hit, you know. But ever since we moved down here, I've refined that range. Now I've changed it to about 135 to 150 is what I would expect us to hit. If we take this low to this high here, our 1272 is right there at 151.5. Our 1618 is right there at 135. If we take the overall low to high here, which I've drawn just so many times. The 618 itself is right there at 148, let's call it 150, and the 0.69 is right there at basically 135. Lining up with this 1272 and lining up with this 1618 very, very well. So I feel confident, I feel pretty confident that we are going to go down in this range, but, or I should say I have felt very confident, but this, this is definitely shaking my confidence a little bit. And I'm happy to see that you know it has been a, a couple days, almost a few days now since this bounce, and we still haven't produced anything. I'm happy to see that, but I'm not happy with where we're at. You know, if, if you're like me and you want to see the price go down lower, you know, just because we're down one percent today should not be getting you excited. You know, the only exciting thing is that we haven't made a move yet, but it's also concerning. It's got me on the edge of my seat. I just want you to make a move already, so I know what to do with myself. Go up, go up. It's okay. I don't care if you go up because if you do. I'm not going to buy up here. I'm not going to buy up here. I'm not going to chase. I'm going to wait. I don't care if it goes up that high or higher. I'm going to wait for it to do a pullback. <clears throat> and I don't care how high this pullback is. It can be above It can be above where we are now. It can be below where we are now. But I will be buying on the pullback. That's my plan if, <clears throat> if we were to go higher. If we take this into consideration here, this low and this low here, we have a kind of trend line like this. Let's say we did break out. Okay, we had a little breakout and we go up to this previous area of support, previous area of resistance, somewhere there right around like 256. Maybe we go higher, whatever. And then we come all the way back down and we find support on this trend line. Maybe we don't. Maybe we find support a little bit above it. But guess what? That little circle there is right where we are now. And I would rather buy after the pullback. I would rather buy then than buy here ride it up thinking that it's good and then it just shits the bed or buy here and then it just shits the bed, you know, either way. And if I bought here and it just went straight to the heavens, you know, I would feel pretty lucky and pretty smart about it, but I'm not convinced. I'm just not convinced one way or another. To me, we're still in a downtrend. We still have lower highs. We do have higher lows right now, but I think we could be on our way to forming another lower low. It's really hard to say, but that's I'm just maintaining that position because the trend is your friend until the end. And the trend, as far as I'm concerned, has not ended. There's been there are signals there are signals, there are there are rumblings that the trend may have ended. But truthfully, all this range is, right? All we're doing is finding resistance at a previous area of support, right? We're finding resistance at a previous area of resistance. We're not, that's that's not a good thing. We're, we're declining in volume while moving higher on a closing basis. It's not a good thing, right? Um, the one hour itself, the four hour looks bearish on the RSI, but the one hour is neutral. And that makes sense because just look at how neutral this price is. We're coming down to the purple line. We're kind of hugging it again, right? We didn't get the, a nice bounce off of it like we kind of wanted to. I mean, enough to get people excited, but not, it still produced another lower high. Oh, so slightly. We can call that a double top. We can call that a double top. I'm not going to call it a lower high. I'll call it a, a double top on the on the Binance chart. And this is why I think it's important to look at other charts too, you know, um, besides just Coinbase, besides just whatever exchange you use. We did top off on bearish divergence, right? Um, and now we're moving down. We've moved sideways, kind of finding resistance literally at this like little support zone up here. I mean, I don't know what to make of it, man. The one hour looks neutral to me. The four hour looks neutral to me. The daily itself looks, it has a bearish look to it with the potential to be bullish, but all you'd really need to do is continue to grow. 
continue to grow. I don't even care if you close above these wicks, whatever, just close above this day. If you continue to grow, you know, I'll, I'll definitely be sweating more. But right now, closing at this area, previous area of support, potentially finding it as resistance, I'm not convinced. I'm not convinced. This was not the break above this line that I was looking for, you know. And yes, we have closed above it, but it's just, it's it's making me scratch my head, man. I really don't know. I really don't know what to think of that. So with that, um, I leave you. I leave you, you know. I think I think that's really it. The only thing I can say besides the same stuff that I've said already is the same stuff that I was saying earlier, which I think the key might reside with Bitcoin, right? Bitcoin itself looks a little bit more bearish. Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash are pretty correlated to each other. They're more correlated than they are not correlated. And even in the times, if you put a correlation coefficient on here, even in the times that they have negative correlation, they still move very similarly, right? And we can do it, we'll do it now. Let's just do it now, just so I can show you what I mean. In case you missed the video earlier. Um, indicators, I actually put the correlation, I did not put the correlation coefficient on my favorites, I should. Where are you? Correlation coefficient, you're one, you're one of my favorites, we're gonna use you. Correlation coefficient to BCH USD on Coinbase, okay? Because it's got the most historical data, that's why. Um, looking at it on a monthly basis, I'm gonna get rid of this short-term RSI just so it's not as distracting, right? Because uh, we don't need that anymore. It has been, if we look at it, even whenever it's less correlated, it's above the zero, which means it has a positive correlation still. Even whenever it's less correlated, it's still correlated. And for most of its time, it's above this 0.65 area, above the 0.6, like it spends most of its time above there. So they're, they're definitely correlated. And right now we're in some areas of heavier correlation. If we look on the weekly, we're pretty correlated right now. We look at the daily, we are pretty correlated right now. And do we have bouts where we have negative correlation? Sure, but it's very, very, very short-lived. And let's look at those, right? That's that's what got me pulling this up, was the negative correlation days. This day right here, if we look, let's. I need to compare it to Bitcoin Cash, don't I? BCH, let's do new price scale. We'll do it like that, and then we'll do candles, so you can kind of see it, and I have to make it in log logarithmic there we go so on this right here where we were basically neutrally correlated bitcoin continued to move up a little bit higher while sideways while bitcoin cash continued to move a little bit down while sideways but they moved down together right you can see it bitcoin cash and bitcoin literally had their bigger drops together they even had the same pump together in this little like divot here together um Another phase where it actually had negative correlation was right here. And that's because Bitcoin Cash pumped one day while Bitcoin itself was neutral, but then it continued to move lower. And it actually found its low right around the same time that Bitcoin Cash did, right? They found their lows together. Same thing, let's see, over here, I don't know. I wouldn't, That it's, it's kind of neutral. We're not gonna go over that one. We'll go over the uh, negative ones, right? This negative one here, this, we were in the negative on correlation whenever Bitcoin itself had a neutral day here and Bitcoin Cash had a neutral day as well. I'll try to blow this up so it's a little bit easier to see. Um, and then whenever it was like at the next day of this, Bitcoin itself pumped and Bitcoin Cash pumped too. And they, they literally pumped together and it was not correlated or it was in a negative correlation. So I'm just saying, even whenever they're not correlated, they're correlated. They very much do move together. So back to the main point of what I was trying to finish off with before I went on my whole little spiel there is that I think Bitcoin might be the key. I think Bitcoin might be the key. And what I mean by that is if Bitcoin goes down, Bitcoin Cash will go down, right? Bitcoin Cash, the chart is a little harder to navigate, I would argue. But right now with Bitcoin, I feel like it's not. It's very, it's much more obvious as to like what's going on, right? We have lower lows still. We have lower highs still, right? Decreasing volume. I think it's pretty obvious as to what's going on. We're in a consolidation phase right now. And our next move, in my opinion, will probably be to the downside. But if it's to the upside, cool. That'll at least give us some directional guidance on Bitcoin Cash as well. Um, looking at this thing on the weekly. Oh, I don't have my RSIs. I don't have them. I need them. We looked at it on BCH, but I didn't look at it on BTC. We'll do BTC USDT, sure on Binance, <clears throat> the weekly RSI is below the 50. If you close this week, we have five days left essentially. If we were to close this week here, or a little bit higher even, right? We're at 27K right now. If we were to just kind of 
move up and down, move sideways, whatever, for the next like little bit, we would basically be potentially rejecting this 50 area where we found support on before. And rejecting the 50 on the Bitcoin weekly would be a big deal, in my opinion, to signal that we probably will find lower lows. Do we need that to find lower lows? No. We could turn around here, forget the rejection, whatever. Um, the daily itself, you've got this hidden bearish divergence where you have a high, a higher high, and then you have a high here and a lower high, hidden bearish divergence. It's a little bit more clear on the daily here. On the four hour, you have bearish divergence, high here, high here, high here, high here, bearish divergence. Um, on the one hour, two hour, whatever, it's a little bit more obvious as well. And as you're closing higher, volume is dying off as well. So I don't know. I feel like the, the truth might lie with Bitcoin. When we see Bitcoin start to move down, I think Bitcoin cash will move lower. And that's where I'm going to end it, man. Is you know I don't I, it's it's definitely we're definitely in an area where it's critical. We just haven't done anything one way or another to kind of show us where we're going. I still do presume that we are going to the downside, but I'm prepared to change my my opinion on that as soon as we show something a little bit more than a 0.6% day above the area I was looking for us to close. You know, because this this isn't enough for me. It really isn't enough. So. If you like the video, leave a thumbs up, subscribe to see more. I will see you guys on the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.